Hello, I'm Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, and today our project is going to be this Pen Peerless 209. Now, I got this one in a batch of reels off of eBay, and they were in really rough shape when I got it in. And I looked at the, the metal and the corrosion and stuff, and I said, you know what, this is going to be a really hard reel to try to bring all this brightness back on. However, when I went to my dad's, I was able to find this frame, this spool, and this side plate all sitting there in his parts pile. And I'm not sure why in Louisville, Kentucky, he would have had a Penn Peerless 209, but um, he did. So I'm going to take this, and I think we're going to build up this 209 out of the parts from this 209. And I think we're going to have a much better reel than we would have had otherwise. So I'm going to begin by uh, scrubbing these parts down, stripping it out. Um, I'm going to take everything apart. That's probably easier said if I go ahead and start by taking the complete reel apart. And then I'll just take this off camera, this one over here apart. And um, But we'll take this guy down and get it um, stripped so that you can see how it all came apart and then you'll see how it all goes back together. So we're going to start off by taking off the handle. Oh, by the way, let's check this reel before we get too far into it. See if it works. Okay, spool release works. How about drag? The drag works. The clicker. Clicker works. Clicker releases. Okay, this is actually a functioning reel. It's just not an attractive reel. So what we're going to do is basically build up this one over here and make it attractive. Now, I believe, and I'm not certain, but uh, some of the guys on the um, pen collector's line will probably tell me if I get it wrong. But I'm going to take, if you look, these two side plates are not the same. All right. See the difference in them? It'll be easier to see once I've got them completely stripped down. But I believe that this is the older side plate, so that's the one I'm actually going to build up. So anyway, let's get this apart. And Ed, I'm going to try really hard today to keep everything in the actual picture. I usually try to do that anyway, but uh, I know it makes it hard when you're watching for entertainment value and you see somebody slip off the off of the out of the field of view. It uh, becomes aggravating, and so I will do the best I can to try to keep this in view today. All right, we've got the side, we've got the handle off, we've got the star drag assembly off or nut off, we've got the post screw. Now we're going to remove these screws here, and I'm also going to take this off of this side plate because I actually plan to use it on that side plate over there, or base plate. So let's go ahead and strip that down. It makes it so much easier to work on if it's not on the reel. All right, that's got those off, so now they can sit flat. All right, now we're gonna take the side plate screws off. I'm gonna start off with the two base plate screws. Now, these were some of the screws that I was missing from the other frame that was gonna keep me from putting it together. Between those screws and the um, handle being missing, they were going to keep me from putting that re that reel back together without ordering new parts. And by the time you order the handle and then replace all the side plate screws, you're talking about $25. And I really didn't want to spend that on it. So we're going to take this reel, put the two of them together to make one good reel. All right. These screws, notice, are considerably longer than the ones I took out of the base plate. 
All right, remember that. Two more to go. All right, in the event, like I'm having right now, that you can't get this to hold tight, first you can try tightening up the other side. See if that works. There, it did. Okay, if that didn't work, you can like wrap the post in steel wool and grab hold it with a pair of pliers and hold it in place. But that held, so. All right, now the side plate will come off and the spool will come out. And at this point, I can check and verify that the two spools are identical. All right. Now, this spool is terribly eaten up with corrosion. So we're not going to use that one. We're going to use this one, which is in great shape. And seeing as how it's from Louisville, Kentucky, probably was never exposed to anything worse than um, pond water. All right, that's got that. There's our shield. Our shield on the other one seems to be in good shape. So we'll lay this one over to the side. There, oh, there's another part that we do not have with this one is the um, worm gear. Okay, so that was another part I was going to have to buy to put that reel together. So there we go. We've got a good worm gear. That one seems to be in good shape, except it's dirty. All right, is there anything left in this one that we're going to need to put this together? Um... Interesting. This frame on this 209 comes apart all the way. This frame does not. Interesting. Okay. There's nothing else left here that we need on this one over here. Including that. All right. All of that is good. We'll check our spare pawl and see how that is. Uh, we are going to need this bearing right here. So we're going to need to take that bearing off of that one and put it into this one. Hopefully it will trade over. And if it turns out that I'm completely wrong and that this is the older one instead of this one, then um, I can always come back and swap the side plates back around. But for now, we're going to retire this one. There's nothing left on this one that I need, as far as I can tell. But we do need to rip this one apart. Okay. That gives us this side plate, which when we compare it to this one, oh, uh, there's a part we're going to have to take also because, no, 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 that's part of this frame. On this one, that trim ring is part of this. On this one, it's built into the frame. So we'll be able to leave that there. I don't have to have anything there. All right, everything here, all the rest of it seems to be the same, except that this one seems to be cleaner. So let's retire that one for now. Well, let's, let's check something. On our side plate, one of the things that can create havoc is the eccentric being loose. That one's tight. Let's take a look at this one. This one is tight as well, so we're good on the eccentric. So we're going to retire all of that. And um, we'll go ahead and repeat the process over here that we did over there. Take that off. Okay, now we are going to probably need to get some uh, um, drag washers. Because if you look, see this sleeve right here? It is just barely sticking outside of that frame. And that's like that. It's because the drag washers are worn way down. Yeah, see how proud this one stands? All right, so we're going to end up having to take this one apart and steal the drag washers out of it for the other one. So, all right, when we get in there, we're going to find those are very thin drag washers. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's put it in this configuration so that I can, or position, so that I can see it better. All right, we're going to take these screws out. These are our bridge screws. All right, there's one. Now notice this one doesn't have any threads here in the middle of it. That's because it's going through a spring on the other side. Take this one off and do the same thing. And it's not going to have threads also, see? 
Now, I'm going to take this one off, which is, this one's not doing anything except holding the bridge in, but it will have threads all the way up and down, like so. And we're going to have one more. This one should hold the shift dog, and it should also have threads all the way up and down, like so. Once we've got that, and we know that's what we want, we're going to let this pop down and keep it in the palm of your hand because there's a spring up inside here that operates the shift dog. Okay, take that out and the sleeve stayed in. So we're gonna push the sleeve on out too. There we go. Okay, here it is. there's the spring right there. Okay, we don't wanna lose that. Let's see if we can bring it up here where you can see better. See the spring? All right, we're gonna set that down over here. And I've got a trick to not losing those springs, at least until you need them. What I like to do to not lose them is go ahead and slide them onto a safety pin like that. That way, because all, all it takes is the slightest pressure bouncing on that and that spring takes off. So if I put it on a safety pin, it can't get lost. All right, that's got that. Now we're going to take the jack plate off. If you press down on the yoke, which is, this is our uh, pinion. And the pinion is mounted in the yoke. If you press down on the pinion, it should move down, which it would if it was in position, but it's not anymore. It is slid over, or at least it appears to. All right, so, yep, it's all falling out, so we'll just let it slide out. There we go. Okay, there's our jack plate and two springs. There's the problem. The jack plate is in the lower position. It needs to be in the upper position. That allows you to slide it off. There we go. And our two springs. And again, if you don't want to lose them, it's a good idea to put them onto a safety pin. So now I've got all three springs on that safety pin. Okay. Here's our eccentric. There's a lot of dirt and stuff in here. This eccentric is moving very well. Um, a lot of times, if it's not, I go ahead, if I can feel grit and grime in there, I'll recommend going ahead and taking that off. But uh, there's nothing wrong with this one. But I found out yesterday that sometimes if you don't go ahead and show somebody how to do something, they end up taking it apart and then you end up shooting another video to show them how to put it back. So let's go ahead and take the eccentric out. Okay, remove the screw off the eccentric. Then move the remove the eccentric handle. It's easier if you set it in a loaded position. Then flip it over and then take it out of the loaded position. Okay, that way you can lift it up and out. But look at the configuration of the spring. All right, one end of it goes in this notch over here. Right here. Okay. Once it's in that position, you should be able to lift it on out, lift the eccentric out, push it up. There we go. And notice the notch here on the spring that fits into that little hole right there. There we go. Okay. All right, that's got all those parts off so it can be cleaned. Let's go ahead and pull the pinion gear off and we'll scrub it and clean it. Now, what I like to do is try to group the parts together that are gonna be together, okay? When you're putting in the parts in the side plate, you're gonna have this spring, this eccentric. Move this over so you can see. Okay, the spring, the eccentric. Then you're going to install the pinion gear into the yoke and then install your jack plate. That keeps all those together. Okay, the next group is going to be this group right here and your anti-reverse dog right here. It goes in this direction right here. It's gonna go with a bolt through it right there. All right, and it's going to fit into this notch over here. Let me flip this over. Okay, like so. 
it's going to fit like this with this screw through it right here all right with that screw through it and this gear in place let's go ahead and take all the excess off that'll be sitting in there like that then this part's going to be in there and that anti-reverse dog is going to fit into this little cog right here on this and when it's there what it will do is it's going to slide in there but watch right here see that little notch right there that little opening that's where that spring is going to sit and we've got to be very careful putting that in. A lot of people use a one-gallon Ziploc bag for installing that. I think we will probably be doing the same thing since I only have one more of those as a spare. Okay, take this out. Take our gear out. All right, so we're keeping all this together. Um, if you need to take this apart, and I'm going to go ahead and take it apart just for those who need to. Wipe that off, and what you're going to see is there's a pin right here, and that pin can be punched out. I use an ice pick usually to do it, and I usually try to find which the pin usually is in recessed on one side and down deep on the other side. And what I'll try to do is try to find the one that's recessed. I'll set the, my pick into it, try to hold it in place, and then I'll just give it a little pop. All right, once you've got it about that far, then it should easily come out. Okay, once you've got the pen out, your sleeve should slide on off. And since it didn't come off easily, I'm going to uh, suggest that there is a lot of uh, old grease and stuff inside there we'll have to clean out. Okay, that's got that. Now we're going to come back over here. And remember, this gear was on here and slid down to here. Like so, and that's what wrote on that side. On this other side is our set of drag washers. First, we're going to have this one. Then we're going to have a keyed washer, which would be this one. Then we've got another drag washer. And those really don't look that bad. And then we have our eared washer. It's got these little ears on it. Then we've got another drag washer. And then we've got our last keyed washer. Um, I don't really think those drag washers look that thin and worn, but maybe they are. Um, we'll compare them with the ones that are in the other one and see what we come up with. All right, so all of this now is pretty much disassembled to where it needs to be, except for this side plate over here. So I'm going to slide all these parts over here to the side. These are all part of the same assembly here. Move these over. Now, let's go ahead and take the screws out of this side plate. Okay, with all those out, we can now take this side plate off. And of course, this guy fell off. He goes right here. Okay, now we're going to take this apart so that we can clean inside of it. And it's pretty dirty in there. A lot of old cake grease. So we're going to go ahead and remove the spring assembly for the clicker. And 
and I'm going to take off this intermediate gear so we can carefully inspect it. Is there a washer under it? No washer under it. And we've got this gear. All right, that's pretty much the end of that grouping. The only thing left is gonna be our worm gear assembly. We'll go ahead and take it apart. Got one large screw. Take the screw out. It's holding the paw. You can see it there. You need to take that out so you can clean the dirt off around it. And we're gonna set that over to the side. We'll take our worm gear off and our carrier assembly. And that's got all those parts disassembled. Okay, I'm gonna scrub all these parts up, get them clean off camera, because I don't think you need to sit around and watch me scrub parts. Okay, I'm back with some parts nice and clean now, or reasonably clean anyway. And uh, we're gonna start seeing about putting them back together. Um, we're gonna start off by putting this left side plate back on. Um, we've got this gear. It just sits in place. Is uh, and because this is a level wind, I'm going to to suggest, since I ran into this the other day with a level wind on an Ocean City, that we um, put a little oil on the side and a little bit of grease on the inside. And set that guy in place. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and put some grease along the teeth. Because there's not a lot of friction supplied there. What I found the other day on the Ocean City that I did is when I put grease on the side of it where it was going to lay flat and have to twist, it created a lot of drag. And I mean a lot of drag. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, I've changed my... Uh, method of doing this a little bit by uh, let's go ahead and wipe off the end of it so it sits down in the oil and the gears are on the grease is on the teeth itself and that should ride just fine all right we're going to do accomplish the same thing with the intermediate gear we're only going to put a little bit of grease first we're going to put oil on the back side Okay, that hopefully will reduce a lot of drag by not having grease on those faces. All right, next, we're going to reinstall our spring for our clicker. Go ahead and slide the clicker back. Slide the spring inside it, or slide it inside the spring. And I have got a screwdriver made just for putting these little screws in. Now the clicker should click in and out. We're gonna put a dab of grease on the inside face where the clicker's gonna slide in and out like that. There we go. And it won't hurt to put a little on the back side here so it can get up under it. Like so. All right, that's got that side plate done. Let's go ahead and install it on the mainframe. All right, that's got that. Well, and might as well finish it up. Put a drop or two of oil down inside the bushing. 
for the spool and slip your spool in. Next, we're going to work on the worm gear. And the worm gear, you've got a uh, flat sided area over here, an inset. And that's going to fit, if you set your carrier assembly down like this, that's going to go over to your left because that's going to fit into this side plate right over here. Okay. And once you've got it in there, flip it over, take your pawl and set your pawl down inside the pawl carrier, slip it in and start to screw it down. Okay, once you feel it begin to make impact, like right there, then start to try to turn it. Okay, once it goes in good, it'll drop down more and you can screw it in more. All right. Okay, now you know you've got it in there properly. At that point, go ahead and oil your worm gear. Okay, while you were sleeping, I uh, or on pause, I did a little bit of a tearing down of the other and measuring things, and I found some interesting things out. Uh, number one, the drag, this drag stack over here was much thicker than this drag stack, so I assumed that it was the drag washers that were worn out on these. No, that's not true. These drag washers are each measuring 20 thousandths. These drag washers over here are measuring anywhere from 18 thousandths to 15 thousandths. Um, and judging by the drag washers themselves, I'm going to judge that the red case is actually the older case instead of the black case, as I had originally assumed. So I've got to do some thinking on that and see. But for now, I'm going to build it up as the black case. If I find out later that the red case it really is the older of the two, then uh, that's the one I'm going to build up. I'll take the other one apart, but I won't be doing that on a video, so that's just going to be something that happens. All right. Um, what I also found out was that these drag washers, the metal ones that were in this setup over here, are um, 38 thousandths thick. These on this side over here are 42 thousandths. In addition to that, what I also found was that this sleeve is 50 thousandths um, larger than this sleeve. So I'm going to kind of use the two, the largest of all of them, to give, me, give myself a nice thick drag stack and um, build this up so that it's got a good solid drag that will last for a long time. All right, at this time, it's time to start um, building our drag stack back up. We're going to start off putting a little grease on our post. And we've made sure to clean this out real good with a cotton swab inside. Make sure there's nothing in there. And it actually has channels cut in there for oil. And uh, if you put too much grease in there, I'm afraid it'll kind of stop those up. Slide that down on there, good. Make sure it turns freely. Now, let's go ahead and put that pin that gave us such trouble back in. You have to make sure that the pin is not sticking out of the hole at all. If it does, it will catch. Now, I believe we've actually got a burr on the side from um, driving the pin out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a file and very gently dress that out. Okay, you don't want to gouge down into it, just make sure everything's smooth. Also, check, run your finger along the outside edge here, and if you feel a ridge right here, what happens is when um, the handle nut gets tightened down, it forces the handle down onto this thread right here, and it has a tendency to flare that edge out just a little bit. So if you want, you can take your file and very gently 
address that. See how that's getting shiny right there just on that ridge? Right there. That's because that ridge was actually standing a little bit proud from being flattened down. Okay, just like that. Flip it over, do the other side. Don't go too far. Don't get carried away with it. Just enough to take that ridge off. That way, when you slide your parts on, they should go on pretty well. We still got something standing proud down here at the bottom. Somewhere right, yeah, right there. We still have just a little bit. Now you could just go ahead and force that down on there and that's really what most people do. But um, I'm not much of one for forcing things if I can help it. All right, now let's slide that on. See if you did, yeah, now it slides right on, see? No need to force it. If you clean that up, clean that part, it should go nicely. And right, we're gonna slide the main gear down. And we're gonna take some um, Cal's Universal Drag Grease and apply it to the washer. You don't want it excessive, just enough to lubricate the washer, keep it pliable. Then you're gonna take your keyed washer, that's this one, and slide that down in there. We're gonna lubricate our next drag washer. Rub it in good. If you've got any excess, just wipe it off. Slide it down, like so. Now take your eared washer, the one with these two little ears right here, and we're gonna slide that guy in, and those ears are gonna fit into the gear right there. See there? Let's bring that up so you can see. See the little tabs and fitting into those slots? All right, that's where those go. Then comes our final drag washer. Make sure it's lubricated as well. Slide it on. And fit our last keyed washer over. Install your tension washer. And now it's time for that sleeve. And I wanna use the tallest of the two. That's this one right here. Uh, why it's a little taller, I don't know. Just a difference in manufacture, I don't know. But what I do know is it's going to help this drag stack be more adjustable. All right, I'm putting a little bit of grease on here so that when I slide this sleeve on, like so, it's gonna stay. That way when you turn it upside down to slide it into the side, next to your pinion gear and your yoke, that it's not going to fall off. At this point, we're ready to reinstall our eccentric. We're gonna put some grease on the eccentric because it, it, yes, it is a sliding part. So a lot, most light sliding parts I oil, but this particular one we're gonna grease because it doesn't move much and we actually want some, it to be under some tension. So we're gonna slip it in and move it over. Now, we're gonna be pulling it right back out because we need to get this spring in. All right, we're gonna take this spring with this hook right here, put it into the eccentric, and then we're gonna slip this spring, put it into that notch right there, rotate this around a little bit, there we go. Get the eccentric to go down in the hole. And it's not all the way down, but we're gonna want this to go in a, let's see which direction we need it to go. Clockwise direction. So we should be able to put this handle on backwards and pull this around until we find the balance point of that, where it stays. Once it stays, flip the handle over 
like so. And let's put our skirt in. Okay, just like that, you can see the eccentric. And my camera tells me I have a low battery, so we're gonna pause for a second. All right, for me, it's been almost an hour while the battery charged, and for you guys, it's been just a few seconds. But I'm back now, and we're gonna start working on trying to uh, get this back in. We've got the eccentric back in. It's functioning beautifully. We are going to take our springs and put them back in. Two of them, anyway. One goes here in this hole. One goes here in this hole. And now I'm going to clip this back in to keep that last spring safe and sound. All right, we're going to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, Ed, I'm going to try to keep this in the picture. I'll do the best I can, my friend. All right. Now, we've got our pinion gear, which I've scrubbed up, and it's in pretty good shape. Uh, I do see something left in it there. Hang on just a minute. There seems to be something right there. Just a little bit of dirt. Okay. Um, there was quite a bit of stuff jammed into these gears, gear teeth, and uh, I was able to clean it out using uh, a pen and a wire brush. I cleaned all that out. And um, it's in good shape now. We're going to grease it. Okay, with that greased, now we're going to move over to our yoke. There's our yoke. And they call it a yoke because it kind of looks like an oxen yoke. All right. We're going to put some grease on the center of that where the pinion gear rides. Put that pinion gear in. And the this opening here goes up because it's going to fit into that position on the spool okay so that's going to be up like this because it's going to go against the spool set that in place drop it down inside the hole on top of those two springs now we've got our jack plate okay and our jack plate gets installed like this all right now before you put this in you have to make sure that this is in this position. If it's over here like this, it's going to make it very, very, very difficult to try to get that jack plate in. So move your eccentric around like this. Push down on your pinion gear. Yep, didn't want to go down. Hang on, everything slipped. Let's try it again. The pinion gear was catching on the edge of the hole. Okay, set it back in. Push down, get it down in there like so. There we go. And then take your jack plate, slide it over the top of it. But now you've got to bring it, when you bring it in, you've got to get it to hook onto your eccentric, go over this post, and then sit over top of our yoke assembly. Like that. Okay, with all of that in position, we're going to start looking at putting this gear back in. Now, before we do, let's go ahead and grease the gear. Now, it's been inspected. I took a, a pick to it, too, to make sure everything was clean. And uh, we'll start putting our grease into the teeth on that. All right. With that done... We're going to take this and turn it upside down like this. When we turn it upside down, that's why we put the grease on, on here for the sleeve earlier. So that that wouldn't fall off when we do this. Okay, we're going to push this down. Bring it around. Now, get your screw that has all threads all the way. And we're going to slide it into this hole. Like so. With that done, we're going to take our anti-reverse dog 
If you're putting him in this way, you've got him the right way. If you put him in this way, you've got it the wrong way and you've got no place to put your spring. Okay, so flip him around this way and we're gonna slide it in here and put it over that screw. You gotta hold that screw in with your finger. And this is where your balancing act begins. Okay, you can either at this point, go ahead and slip that spring in or you can use the bag trick that I'm talking about. And I'm gonna show you how to do the bag trick. We're gonna take all of this and put it inside a clear Ziploc bag so that you can see what's going on. And we're gonna take and get our spring now off of our safety pin. We're gonna put Screw back in the hole. Make sure it's on the shift dog. Oop, wrong hole. There we go. Get it on the shift dog. Or shift dog on the screw. Slide it inside here so that it's going to be impacting into. There we go. Now, rotate this around like so, because it's going to hold all of this in place. Bring it to right here, okay, so that we have this notch. Once you've done that, put it inside your bag. So that in the event that that spring goes flying, it doesn't go very far. It stays inside the bag. And this, to me, is one of the most difficult things of this entire job is getting this spring worked into this hole. Slide your spring in. And I've dropped it. Pick it back up. I'm hoping the glare isn't too bad. Slide it into the hole and then take your finger and maneuver it a little bit so that it stays. There you go. Once it's in, it should stay. I'm going to take it out so you can see it clearly. All right. See the spring in there? All right. I'm going to set it back in there until I rotate this over the top of it. Like so. Once that's done, then I can take it back out of the bag and everybody can see what's going on clearly. All right. Flip it over and tighten this screw some. Just enough to get it started. All right. Now that's not going to fall apart. And you can hold it right there. Okay. We're going to take one of these that doesn't have the threads all the way. And put it into this hole right here. Let's tighten that down. Somewhat. Don't take it all the way. Because you might need to maneuver things around a little bit. Let's take the other one that doesn't have threads all the way. Slide it in on the other side. All right. We got one more we're going to put in down here. Now, we can go ahead and tighten them all. Like so. Now, when we flip our eccentric lever here, notice that the gear is going up and down. I'll turn it a little bit on the side so you can see it come up and down. All right. That's what makes it engage and disengage from the spool. Okay. We're going to take and put a few drops of oil right straight down through the middle. So that it goes into the um, bushing. And now this is all together. All of these parts over here for the most part, except for our worm gear, are the spare parts out of the other one. So I'm going to pause for a minute, scrub all them up, put them in my parts bag, and get them put away. Okay, I've got all those parts cleaned up. I put that assembly back together to, so it can go in the parts bag and everything will stay together. It's complete, so there's no missing parts on it. It's functional. If I need it in another reel or somebody else needs it, hey, we know where it is. Um, now we're going to go ahead and lubricate the jack plate right here and where it fits up under 
and then go ahead and lubricate the top of the eccentric because it's going to be spinning right there on it. All right. Add a little bit more there. Okay. Now, let's see. This is ready to go back on. Okay. So we can go ahead and assemble this. Slide that on. Let's go ahead. Remember, we put oil down inside there. And we're going to put dropper two on here. And now we're going to slide this back together. And it should fit just about right there. Okay. <clears throat> now remember that the short screws go in the real seats and the longer screws go up here in the post. Once you have all of them installed, you can tighten them. It doesn't hurt to go back and check these either. All right, next we're going to put our drag knob back on. Notice now how this is standing proud, the sleeve. Notice that it's not way in all the way down, even with the other one. So that means this is going to work properly now. Okay. Get that installed. We're going to come back. This will all turn now, and that's what we needed, is the ability to turn. We're going to take our worm gear, move it down here, the carrier down on this other end, so that we can take this worm gear and slide it up inside here like this. Once we've done that, then we can go back the other way with it and get it into the other side. With that done, we can take the adjuster for it and start easing it back in. Now let's see if we've got everything in right. Looking good so far. Let's see about getting our handle installed. Oh, notice this handle. Remember how green it was? Well, I put it in some acid to clean it up a little bit because that chrome was gone and uh, it ate all the corrosion and stuff off of it, but it brought it down to the copper finish. So you have to keep it well oiled. But remember, I'm not going for collectible here. I'm going for operational, getting this reel back out into the field so that it can go fishing again. To me, it's a very sad story when your fishing reels can't fish anymore. Okay, tighten the handle, screw. All right, tighten that. A little too snug. Let's back it off just a hair. We want it to where it's lined up with the screw hole. And we don't want it to be loose on the shaft. Sorry, Ed, I was falling out of the picture again. All right, that's got that in. Okay, anti-reverse is working. How about our drag? Wow, it can really tighten down now, and yet it can still go loose. Very nice. Let's put our clicker on. Tighten that a little bit. You want to, to barely be able to shift side to side, just a fraction, small fraction of an inch. Okay. All right. Okay, one thing to watch for, if you notice, this is really stiff. 
it works fine, but it's stiff. And if you have tightened this pawl down, remember that's an adjustable spring on that pawl or on that worm gear. Um, loosen it up a little bit and you see, hey, we just got a very loose reel. All right. Makes it much easier to cast. So I wanted you to know that. And there, resurrected from the dead, is actually not a bad looking Pen 209 that uh, the level wind works and does what it's supposed to. There's no sticking. There we go. Um, Pen 209, ready to go fishing again. If you like what you saw here today, please, by all means, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Hit the dislike button, but tell me why you didn't like it. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys, um, this extra piece here for the bottom, I cleaned this all up and got it all nice and clean, and uh, it had been really corroded, and I was a little concerned about it, but what I did notice when I was cleaning it up, I don't know if you can tell, this is cracked right along here. And you certainly don't want your reel depending on a cracked part. Look at that. Okay. Always inspect this seat before you try putting it on and using it. Because that one's garbage. It's not going back on this reel. Um, anyway, if you like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. That's a good thing. And listen, folks... Leave some comments. I love to answer comments. Uh, it shows me that somebody's actually paying attention to what we're doing in here. And uh, they spend a little bit of time working with me. All right? So uh, leave comments. Let me know what you think about what we're doing. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels signing out.